In the sweeping wilderness of Yellowstone, the grizzly once ruled alone. Unmatched in size and strength, no creature could challenge the mighty bear. Then came the return of a formidable rival. Tall, rangy wolves from the north now stake their claim to Yellowstone. And somewhere in the backcountry, an epic battle unfolds. It's a clash that echoes all through Yellowstone. In the cauldron of this wilderness, host to lose. Will wolves be the new masters of Yellowstone? Or can the grizzly keep its kingdom and emerge the victor? It's spring in the northwest corner of Wyoming. The year is about to begin for the grizzlies of Yellowstone. By early March, bears begin to emerge from their long winter's nap. They may not have eaten a thing, and with snow still deep, a female and three cubs search for a winter kill. Otters have been out all winter, slipping and sliding between streams, looking for patches of open water. They're kept under close watch by a coyote. He's on a constant search for food. This is a world of predators, scavengers and opportunists. In the thawing surface layer of ice, the grizzlies find a strange windfall. Entombed in the ice all winter, frozen fish are the first banquet of the year for the bears. While the bears search for another easy meal, the wolves of the Hayden pack gather to feast on the rewards of their own hard work. But a bold young bear has found their carcass, and a grizzly is accustomed to taking what he wants. The Hayden wolves size up the situation. The pack is nine wolves strong, and this is not the largest of bears. He's tried to bury the carcass and defends it from the center of his earthworks. It's his strength against their speed. But the wolves seem to think they can take him. The Haydens prove to be more than the young bear can handle. This time. Thank <laughs> you. 
Bears or wolves, it makes no difference to the ravens. They always make their point, but manage to stay above the competition. Bison will face both wolves and bears over the course of their lives. But the first challenge for newborn calves is just keeping up with their mothers. They're on their way to summer pastures. And for the calves, it's sink or swim. Instinctively, the calves seek shelter next to their mothers. But the waters are cold and fast. Too fast for the tiny calves. One has been swept into a log jam and is in real trouble. His mother has suddenly realized what's happening. Calf breaks free, but is not out of danger. Calves often lose their mothers during river crossings, and without her, he can't survive. This calf is a lucky one. He's safe, though utterly exhausted. The Yellowstone River was just one of the first of many perils to come. A grizzly is following behind them, and for the bear, it's hunting season. Yellowstone's 3,500 bison are the largest free-ranging bison herd in the world. As they gather on the greening meadows of Hayden Valley, the old frontier looks very much alive. It's a scene one old grizzly has witnessed many times. This rugged veteran has roamed Yellowstone for almost 20 years, long before wolves were brought back to the park. He is bear number 211, known to bear watchers as Scarface. In his youth, he hunted bison in this great valley. Now, he leaves such high-risk work to a younger generation. The bear has no advantage of surprise, yet he suddenly swings into action. The chase is just youthful exuberance. There's not much hope of success. The bear will need a better strategy. But a truly devious plan is a coyote's speciality. He's so small, no one takes him seriously. He tests a calf. This one's big and strong. Then he finds a smaller one.
He pretends to play, but this is no game. If the coyote can coax the calf off by itself, he has every intention of killing it. Just one bite could cripple the calf. Some motherly backup puts an end to all that. Another grizzly is on the carving grounds, and this one has perfected his craft. The grizzly uses his top speed of 56 kilometers per hour to separate a calf from its mother. And though the bison weighs twice as much as the bear, she's young and undone by the grizzly's aggression. She hesitates and her calf is lost. For hunters and hunted alike, each encounter in Yellowstone presents a critical choice. What is brave one moment is foolish the next. To fight or to flee, all of life hangs on the decision. With two wolves out on the prowl, a mother elk weighs her options carefully. The wolves have seen her, but not her calf. It's too young to outrun the wolves. Its only defense is to hide and keep completely still. Its mother head straight for the wolves. Her purpose is to distract them, to keep their attention entirely on her. Again and again she charges, then invites them to chase her using the river as a safe retreat. She can play this game against two wolves, but she would never attempt this with an entire wolf pack. Frustrated, the wolves give up. The calf owes its life to the tactics and the courage of its mother. Motherhood, even for a grizzly bear, 
is a test of character. It's June and a spring snow squall has kicked up, but the bear and her cub are confronting more than just the weather. Wolves from the Druid pack have caught them out in the open. In the tug of war between grizzlies and wolves, the wolves attack where they can. They are after the cub. If they can kill it, they will eliminate a future rival. She's not a big bear, but she stands her ground. The wolves won't risk an injury. Suddenly, it's over. The wolves make a decision, and the bears are free to go. As the two dominant predators in Yellowstone, grizzlies and wolves, make life hard for each other. The cub is vulnerable to the wolves now. If he survives to become a really big bear, the tables will turn. But he'll be a cub for a long time yet, and growing up is a full-time job. Things are even more interesting with a brother or sister. Cubs can turn anything into a toy. Every game lets them discover what they can do. And their mother is always there to supervise. For grizzlies, these are the days of family life. They'll spend two and a half years under the constant care of their mother. Then the cubs will be big enough to go their separate ways and travel through Yellowstone alone. Until then, she is everything they need. A wolf's lifestyle couldn't be more different. Wolf pups are used to large families. There are five pups in the average litter. At one month old, they begin to venture away from the den. Their mother is the alpha female, the white wolf with the research collar. But they have other guardians too. Older brothers and sisters, aunts and uncles. A member of the family is always in attendance. When the pups grow up, many will disperse to other packs, looking for a place to belong. Wolves will always be drawn to each other's company. A grizzly ambles along a trail on his solitary way above the den. It's old Scarface. He probably means the pups no harm, but he's come far too close for the wolves' comfort. The adults treat him as a serious threat.
the pup's first encounter with a bear, and their elders have shown them something valuable. Together, they can challenge a grizzly and defeat it. As for Scarface, he hasn't lived this long without knowing how to avoid real conflict. By the end of June, the high country is bright with color. Summer residents are settling in. They're claiming territories, building homes, finding partners. Even grizzlies get caught up in the social scene. It's the mating season. A courting couple could be mistaken for youngsters playing. But for grizzlies, this is romance. Once she has accepted him, they will wrestle and play and mate many times, staying together for 10 days or so. But their devotion will be fleeting. Enduring bonds are not in their nature. Yet, while it lasts, they share a moment of tenderness grizzlies seldom display. While the mating season brings solitary grizzlies together, it sends the companionable bison into an uproar. Bulls are built for the battles of the rut. They wield their massive heads as both weapon and defense. They must protect their own bodies as they twist and turn, pressing for an advantage. 